Today, we're gonna have a little bit of fun and design a Fortnite map for chapter three. Fortnite modding is around the corner and people are gonna be able to customize this games in ways we've never seen before. So today I decided, hey, I'm just gonna make a concept for a brand new Fortnite map and I went all out on this thing. This map is not designed for 100 players, by the way. I kind of wanted to go crazy and I designed a 500 player map. I know that might be a little bit unrealistic, especially with, you know, the servers and potential lag with 500 players on the map. I wanted to go all out and see what kind of concept I can come up with. Before I get into it, I just want to say thank you for all the support lately. Be sure to hit that subscribe button because we're almost at 5 million subscribers. So I really wanted to change things up. I feel like the Fortnite pacing has been kind of the same for a very long time. I wanted to create a map that brought a lot more life to the matches and a lot more action because right now the current map feels like it supports a little bit of an early game and of course an end game but the mid game feels a little dry and i wanted to really take things up a notch so this map is going to be about 1.5 times bigger than the current map the total surface area will actually be 2.25 times bigger so we have a lot more area on the map also we don't want the matches to drag out very very long we still want the game to last about uh 20 to 25 minutes we want the storm to still function the same uh so people who land on the edge will still have to move around and you can accommodate by adding more vehicles to the map so with a big map size and big change like this we would have to change one of the core concepts of fortnite battle royale and that's how the battle bus functions instead of the battle bus starting from one side and going all the way to the other side with a big map like this if you wanted to late drop, it would take so long for the battle bus to get to the other side. We want this match to really play out. We want people to spread out around the map to create a really cool experience where there's players everywhere you go. So the way it's going to work, instead of one battle bus and instead of starting from edge to edge, it's actually going to start in the center of the map. And there's going to be three battle buses and each battle bus takes you in one direction towards a major POI. So there's going to be three major POIs on the outskirts of the map. In the pregame, before you even load into the map, you actually are going to choose which bus you're going to hop in. And each bus will just leave from the middle and go across. That way, players are all over the map. It's spread out. You can choose which direction you're trying to go to. But with the uh, cap on each bus, it's going to force the players to spread out more and create for a very, very interesting match that has players alive throughout the entire duration. So these three major cities that I'm talking about that the buses like kind of travel over, we are, you know, going to go all out on these cities. I'm not talking about like the current small POIs, even Tilted Towers would be considered a small POI to these cities. I'm talking cities with absolutely massive skyscrapers. We're talking like 30, 40 stories high with insane views and a bunch of different loot. And it's going to be packed with different areas that you can land in within the city. Um, we really wanted to try to create like a extreme major POI, um, three of them on this map. We've never really had something of that nature. So it's gonna feel like these cities are kind of like a, a, small, a small map within themselves where people land all around and kind of uh, hunt each other down before having to rotate because of the storm. Another aspect uh, about this map to get people and to encourage people to land on the outskirts because it seems like the outskirts is a bit of a risk because you have to cross this bridge to get to the middle. And, and most of the times the circle is going to pull to the middle. The outskirts are going to have much better loot. So you risk landing on the edge and you risk having to go through that bridge. But these major POIs and the outskirts will have uh, higher rarity loot. Uh, it will be much higher chance to get blue, purple, gold loot, especially landing in the major cities. And that's just the reward that you're going to get for having to land on the outskirts and then cross that you know very deadly bridge which i'll talk about to get to the center island so each of these three major pois will have their own theme i'm thinking one of them maybe the one on the bottom right is going to be a dubai you know really ultra rich poi with really high skyscrapers and uh, maybe the one on the left can be like a massive like japanese samurai temple poi and then maybe the one in the north is going to be like a all ice Antarctica, you know, castle-ish, maybe medieval feel to it. Around the outer ring and within the inner circle, there'll still be uh, medium POIs and big cities, POIs as big as Salty or Tilted or Pleasant or Retail, because um, you still want to spread out players even more and encourage them to land at these areas. 
So let's explain the center area of the map and what's going on here. Okay, you have the outer ring and then you have the center area of the map. The center area of the map, like I said, is going to have worse loot because it's a much safer drop. Um, and most of the times a circle will finish around the center area. But there's these bridges that connect you from the center to the outskirts. And that's where a lot of fighting is going to happen because players from the center might be rotating to the outskirts and players from the outskirts might be rotating to the center and they'll cross each other on this huge bridge. And I'm talking, I'm not talking about a bridge like the one between Pleasant and Tilted right now. I'm talking like a, a wide, you know, 20, 20, 20 tile wide bridge that really scales across and has kind of verticality to it as well. But players will be forced to fight each other here uh, as they try to cross over um, and players can sometimes hold each other on the bridge. And it'll be a very, very interesting like skirmish zone um, where people from the inner circle and outer circle clash and fight it out. The way the water is going to be, it's not going to be like a traditional water that's on the surface level. There's going to be a huge drop from the outer ring and it's going to go all the way down like 20 tiles down and the water is going to be like a huge waterfall and then it's going to be another waterfall slash natural like lane on the other side. So if you fall into the the inner or the the ring pit of the water, you won't fall to your death, but you're going to drop down in the water and you're going to be in a very awkward spot. So taking the bridge is your best bet, but you still have the option to hop in a boat and maybe drive to the inner land and then kind of build your way back up. But you might have people waiting for you on the other side. So you have to kind of plan your approach. It really gives the rotation aspect a very, you know, cool and epic feel right now. Like when you're rotating in Fortnite, it's very simple. Like it's, we've had the same map for a while. It's this, this, the old map is going to feel, you know, really, really small in comparison to this. This is going to really feel like you're going on an epic journey and each match is going to play out like its own story. Like if you're landing on the outer ring, you know, you try to cross the bridge, but maybe you run into a lot of people. You have to dip and jump off the bridge. You find a boat, you drive the boat around, you, you get to the, you know, the shore of the mainland and you have to kind of climb up the steep rocks to get on top of there before the storm catches you. It's going to be a very epic feel. And that's kind of what I'm going for with this map concept is I want to, I really want to bring all the action and all the emotions up a notch uh, by creating these like natural barriers and uh, choke points that players will fight over um, and kind of kind of gives Fortnite kind of a fresh new feel. And the fights will be nonstop from beginning, middle to end. You can constantly find people to fight. And that's the goal for this map is to really allow players who want to just constantly be in action to be in action. If a player wants to fight, you know, 30, 40 people, 50 people, 60 people in one game, they'll have the option to. Um, and if they're skilled enough to take them all on back to back to back without running out of resources and they win the match, they could end up dropping 50, 60 eliminations. Um, but 50 or 60 eliminations might not seem like a lot on this map because there's going to be like literally 500 people on this map. The outer ring, like I said, is going to be where the, you know, the cool, unique stuff is because it's, it's, it's the risk that you take for landing in the outer ring. I'm talking exotics and mythics. Uh, there would be an updated currency system when you go to an NPC to talk to them. Because of how big the map will be, there will be way more NPCs. And each NPC will have, you know, unique buying options. But there will be like standard buying options where every NPC could potentially upgrade your weapons. NPCs could uh, give you mobility items uh, like launch pads. NPCs could potentially, you could potentially like, you know, purchase a vehicle from them to use it to, you know, drive around the map or whatnot. Uh, the NPCs would play a big role. And since there's going to be a lot of looting and kind of spread players throughout the map, you really got to give people mobility options and that's going to be facilitated through the currency system, which will be rehauled and, you know, updated to, to fit the needs of this brand new massive Fortnite map. The outer circle will be where all like the cool, unique stuff are like the hop rocks and the sand tunnels and whatnot. Um, and the inner map will play more like a traditional Fortnite map while the outer map is going to be like an extreme you know, version of the, you know, Fortnite events and, and POIs and whatnot. So what do you guys think about this map? The reason I brought this up is because, you know, we hear more and more about Fortnite modding coming up and, uh, you know, rumors about chapter three, you know, potentially being around the corner. Um, and I just kind of wanted to put this together because like, if I had, you know, if I had my say, I would, I would create a crazy Fortnite map and try to fit as many players on it as possible without, you know, causing uh, lag or the service to crash. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to see more concepts like this, let me know.